everybody, welcome back to Goose Disney Pod. Disney Pod. I am your host Ray Goots. We are here on Attack of the Clones, and joining me is Kanal Aurora. Kanal, how hey. are you, buddy? Buddy, I'm chilling, man. I'm glad to be back on. I really yeah, enjoyed these conversations. Almost, it's been two and a half years. You had fun and fancy free. That was your first movie. Yeah. And ever since then, that was in uh, November of 2019. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you a question: Have you been fun and fancy free since then? Um, at times, I think I have. <laughs> okay. been. I've times have been fun and fancy free. At times, I've been uh, s- sad and uh, unfancy. <laughs> what What have you uh, been up to since then? Let's see. What did I do since then? I started teaching myself the guitar. Okay. Um, that's been fun. Um, I wrote a screenplay. Read a bunch of books. Uh, what else? Da-da-da-da-da. I think I had more to show for it. Wrote some material. I don't know, man. I think that I've been pretty happy with a lot of things. So making the most of it. Yeah, you weren't one of those people that was like depressed about the pandemic, right? You were pretty good about it. You know, the thing is, I think those people that were depressed about the pandemic is because their lives are not as chaotic. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like yeah. when your life is like good and healthy, then something like a pandemic is bad. But when your life is unhealthy and chaotic, a pandemic is like, oh, this is perfect. Yeah, when uh, the, right before, I'm um, funny, I'm looking at my, my face because you get the memories on Facebook. Right before the pandemic started, mm-hmm. I was dealing with a lot of comedy drama. Mm-hmm. And when the pandemic hit, it was like, problem solved. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and uh, now, you know, now everything's fine. But yeah, you did, like, I feel like you do when you're having like a rough time of it, it's nice to have like a clean break like that. Right. Right. And I think those who thrive in chaos, a pandemic, it's just perfect. So, yeah. you know, it's like time to relax. Um, mm-hmm. And how's stand up going? Fantastic. Everything's going, you know, it's as good as it can possibly be. I mean, it could always be better. Sure. I, I guess it could always be worse. You know, the other day I actually did something that kind of, um, it was inadvertent, but it kind of made me smile. Um, I was looking through my phone and I was, I don't know who I was trying to call. I don't remember, but I was just scrolling through my phone book. Right. Mm -hmm. And the list of people in comedy that have quit over the years Mm. is so massive. And you don't think about it until you look at your phone book. Yeah. You know, you won't know, like if you look at your texts, these are the people you communicate with. But if you look at your phone book, you're like, oh, this person quit, this person quit, this person quit, this person died, this person quit, this person quit, this person died. And you're like, oh, shit. You know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I... Um... It's sad that it brought me kind of a little bit of joy. <laughs> <laughs> I do need more people to quit. There were some people I thought for sure this whole sit, the whole pandemic would have eliminated them. And they're somehow... Yeah, just... man. Stringing along, you know? It's impressive. It is. It is. It's like, wow, you are just never giving up. Holy no. shit. <laughs> but you also have to admire that kind of tenacity. Like, I will find, like, I will, you know, I will find an outhouse and put on a show. You're not mm-hmm. stopping. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. If you love it, you do it. That's all. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. It's all, it's about the love. Um, Let me ask you a question. When you were young, now are you a Star Wars fan or did you, were you into it ever? I wouldn't say I was a fan, but I did watch the, all the movies. So okay. I just like science fiction. So it's not like I was never, I remember watching the movies as a kid, like renting them on VHS. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I watched all three in one night or tried to, I don't know. I did try to do it overnight and it was, I don't know how much I remember of it. So I was like kind of reading about it last night, trying to refresh my memory about the whole situation, but yeah, it's good. I like star Wars. I wouldn't say I'm a fan though. Okay. Uh, what's what's your favorite Star Wars thing? Hmm. Probably Return of the Jedi. Really? Yeah. That's funny. That was that's Leah's too, actually. Leah Bonema, who, who she yeah. covered. See that to me that that's the weakest one for me of the original three. That's the third one, right? Of the original. Yeah. Three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason why is because it ties into what we'll discuss with this one. And I think that's why I can't kind of like it. I like the retribution, you know? Yes, you love, you like it being redeemed. You know, the thing is this, a lot of the times throughout the first 
three, you know, I guess in the order of them, right? You know, uh, Phantom Menace, uh, Attack of the Clones, uh, Revenge of the Sith or whatever. Uh, those three, they're constantly saying, especially in the third one, that um, Anakin was supposed to bring balance to the Force, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what they constantly say. And Return of the Jedi, he does. Yeah. So it's Although just I'm not, not sh- on I'm, I'm their I'm not exactly timeline. sure what balance means. I don't think they've ever really achieved that balance. Well, throwing Palpatine through a, a garbage chute is kind of Oh, yeah. But he didn't die. <laughs> well, that was like a clone later, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, I mean, he was still around uh, building giant fucking... Oh, that's a whole of it. That's a whole thing. Yeah. I almost feel like those movies don't count. The new ones. There's the last three? The ones with uh, Daisy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just feel like because yeah. they're so ridiculous and they have nothing to do with any of the other movies. Right. I know because it's like further down the line and all those things. I get that. But I yeah. think that and them bringing Palpatine in some sort of clone-like manner is what mm-hmm. I think they did, right? It's not actually him. The original one's dead. I'm not mistaken. I think it's his spirit, though. Yeah, it's his spirit. They're very right. unclear of how he exactly got. Sure, it. and that's the thing is like, but that's the balance to the force. I think that's why I think that that's what makes it so. That's what it makes my favorite because it's retribution, and I think that retribution is like, it's one of my favorite things. Mm-hmm. So well, it's funny because I did a whole big Star Wars re uh, rewatch two years ago where I. Uh, watched from the phantom menace to rise of skywalker right to get ready for rise of skywalker and everything after return of the jedi kind of feels like this weird really long extended epilogue like the story perfectly ends everything from phantom menace to return of, everything leads to return of, it's kind of like there's really nowhere to go after return of the jedi and mm-hmm. to keep going with this with the story is like all right, but everyone got closure. Every single character had closure at the end of Return of the Jedi. Now you're just going for the sake of going. That's how I feel about the newer stuff. Yeah, the, the newer one is an extended epilogue. That's what you yeah. said, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It completely is. It's it's a cash grab. I mean, this is Disney owning Star Wars going, let's let the whoring begin. Yeah. That's all which, it is. Which they're still doing. Let me yeah, ask of you. of course. Let me ask you, before today, you've seen Attack of the Clones. you see seen it in theaters back in the day? I did see it in theaters back in the day. And what did you think of it back then? Back then, I I liked it. I remember yeah, liking it. I really liked it back then. Yeah. And it was, <laughs> but then to watch it now and, you know, to not, I mean, I'm going to talk about this movie with not in consideration to Revenge of the Sith or whatever, right? Yeah. That's the third one, if I'm not mistaken. So... I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to talk about it with strictly just number two. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah, me too. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, I enjoyed the hell out of it. I thought it was a good movie. And now, how do you feel about it? Watching it last night, um, you just you just look at everybody like they're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's a goddamn moron. I mean. You know? This uh, I think the biggest problem with this movie, and it's almost comical, is mm-hmm. Anakin. He, you know, we're supposed to, he's not Darth Vader yet, but he's supposed to be like kind of like a I I think what they're going for is like a well-meaning but bratty kid. You know what I mean? Like he's going through like his bratty phase. Yeah. And mm-hmm. He just comes across as a piece of shit. And well, I mean, come on, right? He's 19. You know? I know, but like. Like, there's where, nothing do, likable about him in this movie. I I mean, there's clearly something likable. Padme likes something about him, right? Okay, well, I have a theory about that. I, okay. I, I don't mean to dive this deep into the movie so far, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I am. Okay. I think, and every time I rewatch it, I'm more and more convinced I'm correct. You know how the Jedis have the thing where they're like, these are not the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. I think the entire movie, he likes her. He doesn't know he's doing this. He likes her so much. He force tricks her into falling in love with him. I don't necessarily know if that's, I mean, I don't know if that's possible as like a force thing. I understand. I think it's a great theory. It's a fun yeah. theory. I don't think that it's necessarily possible as like a force trick. To because me, the every- force is like used and abused in this, in the entire movie series. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. used and abused to justify uh, plot holes. Mm-hmm. It's used to justify uh, situations that occur. It's like crazy. 
And it's fair. It's fair. So I'll have to operate within those bounds. But that I understand that theory. I don't agree with it. I think that she, there is something sweet about him. But he, because he just like, even like there's a scene where they're alone in a room. And he's like, uh, just being around you is pain. And it just yeah. sounds almost like a creepy tweet a guy would send like a famous woman on Instagram I more know, so than like he's there with her the intensity of what he's saying is all there he's just like you don't understand what it's like to be this in love with you and you know I don't know if you feel the same way and I'm supposed to and think about the world that they live in she's a senator he's a Jedi he's supposed to never be have attachment to things or people yeah. and then you have all these things and then these like this amalgamation of emotions he's 19 years old in yeah. love with a 24 year old woman who is someone he should never be with because of their stations in life. And what's crazy to me is that really the major fuck up in these, in this movie falls on two people. Okay. And it's not even Anakin. Okay. Who is it? It's Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda. Okay. Yeah. Give me the, give me tell, to break it down. Okay, I'll go with Yoda first. First all of all, right. this guy is able to, I mean, and listen, I've, everyone always loves Yoda and I get it. I totally get why you'd want to love Yoda. You know, the small green guy, lightsaber, incredible use of the force. But how good is his use of the force when literally they are shrouded in darkness? Mm. You know, mm. how good is his use of the force when this guy has been able to offer jack shit in terms of, in terms of powerful force usage. Well, it is kind of shocking how dumb the Jedis are because uh, Palpatine <laughs> is openly like just operating right in front of them. He's not like hiding in like some fucking office miles away. He's yeah. literally like sitting with them and be like, oh, you, you guys, you guys are getting weaker, huh? You guys don't know right. what the fuck you're doing. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Like it's, you know, it's weird. It's like, you know how um, when somebody is under disguise, they, they put on the hood, like, you know, they put on their costume mm -hmm. and you don't know who they are. Palpatine has his hood off. Yeah. He's, he could not be well, any clearly there. I think what Lucas is going for with Palpatine is like a Hitler thing. Like Hitler was out in the open. Hitler was mm -hmm. running for things and Hitler was kind of like, I'm going to work with you on this. You know, like mm -hmm. he wasn't like balls out Hitler as we know him. And he right. got elected fair and square. And mm -hmm. then he turned, like, he used the system to his advantage. And then he turned to a fucking raving right. monster. Yeah. Um, but, mm -hmm. People just voted for him because they just were like, we just want the economy to be better. We just want there to be jobs. And, I, and the same thing with Palpatine. It's like, look, we just want the Republic to be back to normal. And Palpatine's right. going to help us do that. He's the best guy for the job. So I think that's what the analogy that Hitler's going for, that if Palpatine was like in the shadows, it wouldn't be as effective as the fact mm -hmm. that, you know, people do, you get the sense that everyone does like him, like in the world. Yeah. yeah. Right. But it's just like, how is this guy operating when you literally have the Jedi counts? It's not like yeah. the council is on another planet. They're next door. I know. I know. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like yeah. if I'm sitting here talking some wild shit about, I don't know, uh, <clears throat> let's say killing my neighbor and I'm mm -hmm. screaming about it in my apartment, he might hear me. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like that's what it feels like with, with Palpatine. Like he's just, it's so crazy the way he's moving and the Jedis have no clue. And it just makes me lose sort of sympathy. All right. So that's Yoda, right? Mm -hmm. So Yoda complete fuck up there. Mm -hmm. Obi-Wan Kenobi might just be the dumbest guy in the entire movie. His fuck-ups really? okay. are just, I mean, they're so, they're so massive. Like the one line that truly kind of irked the hell out of me, but is also fair and then like kind of cute is where he goes, when Obi-Wan Kenobi says to Anakin, you're going to be the death of me. Love that line. Yes. Love that line. But it's just like, are you that fucking dumb? Like this entire council is you know especially Obi Wan Kenobi there he's there with um, Anakin and Padme and Anakin's talking about how he's missed her how he's excited to see her mm. how literally emotional nineteen year old kid emoting all these massive feelings he's not hiding it from Obi Wan and Obi Wan even encourages it he goes like she was excited to see us and yeah. it's like dude you're like basically egging him on 
to fuck and then yeah. and then you go well you know what i'm gonna go investigate this thing you watch you know what you two young people go out on your own and that's the decision to be made are you out of your damn mind <laughs> like what how insane is obi-wan kenobi to be like you know what i'm gonna set this 19 year old emotional guy who clearly has a crush on this senator let them go off and i'm yeah. just gonna i'm just gonna you know venture on and do my own thing what a fucking dummy dude he's a complete idiot yeah, and then like the more the more like I think when I first saw the movie, I thought Obi Wan was trying to get Anakin laid. Like I mm. I didn't really look, know like the rules of the Jedi. They weren't that they're not that very clear. But right. then as I knew got to know more about like the Jedi's like code, it's like wow, Obi Wan like that was a really like that's a really stupid move because that's kind of leads him on the path of the dark side. You know, extreme it's emotion, temptation, like, right? Yeah. And this is the thing I think that once. This is what would have saved the Jedi's in general. Once a, a line, a Jedi switches to the dark side, every one of their Padawans going forward should have been removed. Yeah. Like yeah. think of it this way. If, if Dooku, which is uh, Yoda's Padawan, if Dooku was, you know, he switches to the dark side, Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Anakin, never should have been Jedi's or should have been and then taken out entirely. Yeah. Like no, you're right. Not, I mean, because he couldn't clearly the decisions that this person made led to a chain effect of bad decisions entirely. Qui-Gon Jinn, terrible. O Obi-Wan Kenobi, even worse. Anakin, clearly even awful. Like you see what I'm saying? Like it just never made sense. And yeah, I think if you that, think about it, if you think about this Jedi regime is fucking terrible. I mean, yeah. Darth Maul, somehow he gets fucked up. Mm -hmm. Um fucking yeah uh count dooku then we got um anakin mm -hmm. and then luke they don't really prepare luke for anything and then luke creates kylo ren mm -hmm. who almost just you know almost destroys the galaxy so yeah, the whole like, lineage the is one, bad yeah the only one who kind of gets her shit straight is a palpatine who already had his shit straight because he took over the galaxy talk about ray palpatine right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's no. That's the thing that really like annoys me is that they there's no co course correction of any sort. And then you got Yoda sitting there being able to sense the fact that Anakin is in pain, mm -hmm. and then does nothing for it going forward. He goes, "Oh, I can <laughs> sense that he's in pain." And I go, "You mean the fact that this guy murdered a small village?" <laughs> yeah, I, one would think that he's a little hurt. You know, and it's like this, and you come back to fight Dooku, and then you have a chance to confront Anakin, and then it's like, that's it? Nothing is said, nothing is done, nothing is sort of handled here? Yeah, they, they didn't really ever reach out to Anakin. I mean, they when he said, I miss, well, look, Yoda's bullshit. Mm. Like, I know we said we're not going to tell the other movies, but in Phantom Menace, you miss your mom, and then he just chastises him for missing his mom. And it's like, that's not how you deal with people's emotions. You can't be like... Well, just fucking stop missing your fucking mom, bitch. We got, you got training to do, you know? This is the failure of the Jedis, essentially, is the fact that mm -hmm. it's their inability to kind of handle things properly in terms of emotions. Mm -hmm. It's constantly, you must have none. And it's like, what are you? I mean, don't get me wrong. The Sith is like all emotion, all, you know, and yeah. it's like, I understand. Listen, I side on the side of logic, but you also have to be able to understand how emotions work. You can't strip a nine-year-old kid and take him away just because he's like, oh, he's got power. He, his his metachlorians or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. His, uh, uh, well, I think that like, was the argument uh, that he's too old. I think they do need, if, if you're going to teach kids, like, don't have any emotional attachment, you've got to do that from, like, three, four. Yeah, right. Yeah, you've got you've to teach them, like, that shit because that is very hard to do. Like, I mean... That's like it's uh, our age. It's impossible to be like cut yourself off. You know, I mean, we're just not sure. going to do that at this point, right? Yeah. But yeah. I think that that's one of the things that really upset me is the fact that you do nothing to kind of serve his well-being. Obi Wan Kenobi, in a lot of ways, failed Anakin, mm -hmm. and I think that Yoda failed uh, basically the Jedi's essentially. So, but but this leads me to like my biggest problem with the like why why does feeling love and attack i get i get the reason why but why can't why does love and attachment 
lead to the dark side? Like, why can't you balance and just have love and attachment? Like, why can't you just be attached to like your girlfriend or your wife, your kid? Because that's a corruptible feature. Mm, Well, I know I get, well, yeah, but, but also it's a feature that can inspire you. You know what I mean? I can inspire you, but then also it's like, your inspiration if it's a corruptible feature i think that's where they'd rather not have that as a thing altogether right you'd rather be like listen uh, you know use kidnapping this person's wife or kidnapping their kids and it's like you can now corrupt it's leverage right so the jedis seek to have no leverage in that's terms of- true yeah yeah someone could <laughs> ki- someone could murder their kid and then they strike down in anger and now they're in the dark side yeah exactly you see what i'm saying like qui-gon jinn could be a jedi Liam Neeson in Taken could not be a Jedi. You see what I'm saying? No, yeah. Yeah. yeah the world the world would burn at the end of Taken. Right. So yeah. it's man, it just and it, I understand one of my favorite parts about the movie is of course Yoda f- takes on Count Dooku. And it's like I, I remember watching it in theaters and people losing their mind watching Yoda do these flips, use the lightsaber, and it was just really awesome. And I remember the theater going crazy at watching yes. Yoda go nuts. The theater but now nowadays I don't like it as much because I'm so like frustrated with the fact that he didn't do anything. Yeah, you know but I mean? also it does kind of look stupid. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't think it aged well. Yoda doing all that shit. Yeah, because to me it doesn't make sense how this guy could use a walker, mm-hmm. move so slowly, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden now he's got like. Yeah. That's what I'm saying with the force. The force to me is like such a, it's such a, um, a bandaid on a it's, lot it's of a plot. It's a plot. Well, yeah. It's a plot thing. Yeah. It's a wild card. Truly. Yeah. Like you could do whatever you need to do to make things work by just saying, well, that's the force. Mm-hmm. You know? I remember, do you remember like eventually the marketing was just about watch Yoda kick ass. That's when I yeah. like, like what's because it was a secret that yoda was going to do that nobody knew mm-hmm. until you got right. to the theaters but then after a few weeks the commercials were just like hey go see this movie you can watch yoda beat the shit out of somebody and it's like wow that, that's kind of funny that's what be, the marketing became but yeah i remember that moment in theaters that mm-hmm. was the first that was one of the first moments i remember where the theater just explodes and, and i think it's because you don't expect that like you don't right. expect you, and then right. it's like, am I really actually fucking seeing this? Is Yoda actually whooping ass? Yeah, I think this movie. What's really good about it is the fact that it literally looked at everything wrong with the first movie, mm-hmm. and then said, "Let's do what we can to fix, repair." And you literally just have scenes where you know Jar Jar Binks was supposed to have lines, and that's cut out, and it's less and less and less. Versus the first one, which was almost two, was insane. It's almost unwatchable. Oh, I can't even. Oh, you know? dude, yeah, the first one I had to watch it last week for the podcast. And every mm-hmm. time you, like, this movie is a dumb movie, but I can watch it. It can be on, right? Mm-hmm. I'm talking mm-hmm. about uh, Attack of the Clones. It can be on. I right, can right. enjoy it. Uh, there's things that I don't like about it, but it, uh, it, it can just be on. Phantom Menace, the minute you just try to get lost in a dumb movie, Jar Jar Binks comes on screen screaming and yelling. And you're like, what yeah. the fuck are you doing? What the right. fuck is this? It's literally every stereotype jammed into one. That's yeah. what that movie feels like. It's it's like a Spanish, black, mammy type character, abuela situation yeah. mixed together where it's like, moi, moi, masa, masa. And it's just like, oh. oh and, so- and you... And it's so great to watch that in Attack of the Clones, Jar Jar Binks's lines get literally cut by 400%. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, great, great. I remember one scene there, it's they say something to Jar Jar and you just have Jar Jar Binks on camera and then no words come out. Of oh, it's mouth. when Palpatine is tricking him. Yeah. They're like, who would be brave enough to propose this, uh, yes. you know? Yeah, and and they look at Jar Jar, and I love the fact that they the good guys pay for keeping this fucking idiot around. Yeah, yeah if yeah. this moron wasn't around, mm-hmm. Palpatine wouldn't have been able to take over the the world. I, I don't think I don't think that's a, I disagree. I think that Palpatine either way would have because would have but this guy but yeah, yeah. but but, but this, you know what the fact that Jar Jar is there and the fact that she leaves Jar Jar in charge. Mm-hmm. I just want to let me just tell you something. If I had ever have like, I know he's canceled, but if there ever was a Charlie Rose interview with Padme, mm-hmm. it'd be like, why the fuck 
Do you have Jar Jar Binks doing anything government related? Why? Right. And that is the equivalent of Joe Biden being like, care while well, I'm while well, I'm with while well, I'm in Russia, care top with making decisions. Right. I would say it's like having a postal worker do it. It's like, you know, like, you know, I'm gonna be taking a break, but this guy who sells stamps <laughs> by the book is gonna take care of my it's like, and, what are and, you nuts? Yeah, and if you know things go really bad with this war, he can he can make he can propose that Ted Cruz uh, establishes dictatorship. So uh, I also think that the fact that they just waste like the Jedi army so easily in mm. terms of when they send them to uh, Genosis. Yeah, <clears throat> the I mean, so many Jedi's are getting killed left and right, and you're like, "Fuck me, man!" Like, I don't, what are you doing here? What yeah, are you doing? You guys, this you guys are really not that great. Yeah, yeah. like the Jedi, <clears throat> the, the Jedi's are just terrible, essentially. Yeah. They're, they are blind, they are arrogant, they are like, they're, they're so, they make so many crucial errors. And it's insane that, that you just start to look at the Sith and go, man, these people are operating on a, forget even on a bad level. Let's, let's look at good and bad, oh, separate for a second. The, the Sith are just operating on a smarter level. Yeah. Well, I think that's why even when Palpatine is like, I'm evil, the whole mm-hmm. Senate is like, let's just get powers of this guy because yeah. he's going to get shit done. The Jedi don't really get shit done. No. When they do try to get shit done, they just wind up getting killed. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like you have uh, this council just discussing and nothing is getting accomplished. And it, in one capacity, when uh, Anakin says, they should somebody should make them do these things they should come to an agreement and then padme is like well that sounds like a dictatorship and it's like you know maybe somebody should get these things done not to say they should be a dictator but it should be like listen this is the council you don't leave until something is figured out and that would have been the middle ground that would have been necessary to keep the what's thing called to keep the sith out of there in some capacity but either way yeah and i know that like fucking I know that Sidious or Palpatine, whatever, whatever you want to call him, is manipulating everything, which is why. But like, you have to look at the Jedi and be like, you have to look at the Trade Federation. Be like, how is this still going? How are these guys still a thing? Yeah. What have you done? Like, you haven't done anything, and like, they're getting worse. And now mm-hmm. they, and like, now we have to have clone troopers. Like, right. like, like, you know, yeah, you have to look at these guys. Like, the Trade Federation isn't that bit bad. Like, they're not. That's not that big of a threat to keep going. So mm-hmm. if you're the average citizen, like what the fuck are these Jedi doing? Yeah, man, I don't know. It, it just really, it, you start to see the failure of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda, and the rest of the Jedis. And you start to go, man, I don't feel, yeah, I feel awful for them. But at the same time, I go, you guys have made a series of blunders here. And the biggest one to me was letting Anakin watch over Padme, which yeah. made no sense to me that you're going to let a 19-year-old boy who has clearly stated that he has been dying to see this woman over the past 10 years. And to do that so flippantly is really the massive failure. Of and, this, and also, you know, movie. looking at it from Yoda's perspective, he does kind of fail in protecting her. He brings her to, to Tatooine, which is mm. kind of like a dangerous ghetto planet. Then he mm. brings her right to the heart of the, of the crisis with the, at the, what's the planet called again? I'm sorry. Uh, I think it's Genosis or something. Genosis. Like uh, yeah. He brings her right there. She almost dies. Yeah. Like he doesn't really like you didn't really protect her, dude. The goal was to sit in a lake house with her mm-hmm. until this. And instead, you're bring you you're a fucking like yeah. So it was a terrible plan. She could have died multiple times. Yeah. No, I know. He's. I mean, but this is what it is, man. He's a 19 year old boy. Like, mm-hmm. and that's the thing. Everyone looks at Anakin. And they go, oh man, like you know, he's he's you know, he's bad. He's good. and I get it. The guy's gonna become Darth Vader. But I really think that when you take away a nine year old from their mother, and yeah. it's a you, know, they no longer have that guidance, that emotion, that empathy, discipline, all those things that I guess that they would be learning through the jet through training as a Jedi. Realistically, it reminds me of. Um, what's that show uh the boys right yeah so um the main who's that hero the the evil superman type guy um uh i know you're talking about, uh, what'd you say the blonde guy captain america or whatever the fuck is yeah no is. it was not, it's what the what what is it oh man i i should know this i should right. know this 
Oh, I'm typing in the boys right now. Hold on. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the fuck? Homelander. Homelander, right. So, okay. yeah. So, you know how, like, Homelander is essentially, he was, like, they realize the power, so on and so forth, and they take away the mother aspect of him, so he doesn't really develop a good sense of empathy. And, yeah. in fact, it's essentially the same thing that they're doing here. In, in some capacity, because to take a nine-year-old away from his mother, he loses that sense of empathy. Sure, he'll gain a level of discipline, but then there's also arrogance. And then that creates a whole set of problems too. Man, it's just a, a series of blunders from the Jedi. And the biggest person to squarely blame on all this to me is Obi-Wan Kenobi, who was a Padawan of Qui-Gon Jinn, who was a Padawan of Dooku. You know what I mean? So it's just like, realistically, what do you want from these people they've made nothing they come from a line of blundered errors and they're all dummies <laughs> it's it's no Wait, surprise they're why, all dummies yeah it's no surprise why mace windu ends up getting getting got in the next one you know mm, he but similar jackson still wants him to be alive and i'm just like no dude i mean it's this totally fine because disney has i mean you see what's happening yeah. the mandalorian and then um you know S starship one or whatever the hell they made the, that other one um they're just going to make a gajillion of these movies this will be disney's marvel essentially well, as well. marvel is disney's marvel but I get yeah right. that's what i mean like they, it's another marvel another marvel and, there you go okay. yeah and they can expand each character and develop a backstory in so many ways could there be a series of mace windu movies 100 percent. will there be yeah totally why wouldn't there be um, the other thing that I don't like, this about is what this. makes Disney successful in terms of streaming as well. Right. Because yeah. they can develop these shows, they can develop these movies and there's no problem. They got the money and they got the platform. The other thing, the other thing I don't like about this movie and you have to watch the fucking cartoon series, which I think like, no, I shouldn't have to is they invoke Sifo Diaz and there's this mystery mm -hmm. about Sifo Diaz and they don't ever like he's on, he's on a hunt. Um, Obi Wan's on a hunt to see who authorized the clones, right? Right. And and you're following him on this trail. He's following the clues, and then they kind of just abandon it once he gets yeah. caught. Yeah. And it's like Sifo Diaz. Sifo Diaz was been dead for ten years. It's like, wait a minute, who is this Sifo Diaz? Because you say his mm -hmm. name ninety seven times, and then he never right. comes up ever again. It's like right. you can't abandon a mystery halfway through. Mm -hmm. they, and I mean, I in the, and on the cartoon. The Clone Wars. Did you ever watch that? I didn't, but I heard good things. Yeah, they do expand on Sifo Diaz. Mm -hmm. He was kind of used by Palpatine and Doku. But I shouldn't have to see a cartoon series to resolve who Sifo Diaz is. Yeah, that's the other thing. The Obi Wan went to this planet over a dart. Yeah. Okay. Over a dart, he yeah. traveled twelve parsecs away to get to Kimono or whatever the planet's name is and sh over a tiny dart. Yeah. And then somehow a Jedi who died 10 years ago that Yoda took over the council with Mace Windu or whoever, somehow none of that gets fleshed out. Literally just none of that gets discussed at all. And it's just so frustrating because you're like, what is happening here? They really, I, yeah, I'm thinking... You know, Back in the day, like this is going to lead to like this bigger revelation. Like, there's more going on than there's more going on in these movies than Anakin turns with Darth Vader. Maybe mm -hmm. like there's a uh, force in the Jedi Council. Maybe Qui Gon was going under a name Sifo Diaz, and maybe he's been evil the entire time. We didn't know that, you know. I, like, I don't know. And it's none of that. Sifo Diaz was just a buffoon um, mm -hmm. who got taken advantage of by the Sith. But it's like. Fucking give me more, or, or at least like show me a picture of Sifo Diaz. Like, do you know something. what it felt like? It felt like um, Obi Wan Kenobi, you know, sees some shit that goes foul, sees some shit that goes wrong, and then decides to, you know, what he opens an investigation. Mm -hmm. He goes down to the scene of the crime. He investigates further. He gets all the evidence. He finds the place to go. He knocks on the door, doesn't hear anyone answer, and goes, "Well, case closed." It's like, what are you? <laughs> What are you nuts? But, yeah. Well, I guess, yeah. And it's like, and then they just use the clone army. It's like, no, wait a minute. Somebody 
aren't you curious why a Jedi authorized the making of this fucking clone army? Like, you're just going to yeah. use this? Like, 10 years ago, a, a Jedi went and said, make these clones. Mm -hmm. Like, clearly something's been going on for 10 years you guys don't know about. But now you're Does just like, you know what? These clones come in handy. Let's use them. Like, they literally have a standing army of 200,000 soldiers. Yeah. And then... And then the in Kimono, the prime minister is like, if you need a million more, let us know. We'll bang them out. And it's like, none of this is good. And I get the use of the clone army to kind of take care of the droid army. I understand that. But it, but now all of a sudden, Yoda's a general. He's got, yeah. oh, you got five, you've got five battalions under your command. It's like, hey, hey, how about all of a sudden we've got these massive ships and an insane army? We're not going to look into any of this once this is over? Yeah. We're not going to ask any questions? And they don't even bring it up the next movie. And it's like, why no. start a mystery if you're not going to resolve it? Well, that becomes because the Jedi, once They're again... Idiots are short-sighted idiots, man. They literally, it's like, oh, look at this. This guy's going to save the force. We'll go with him. Oh, look at this. This is a fun army. We're not going to question why. And it's like, oh, man. I mean, to be honest, the Jedi kind of have it coming. <laughs> you know what? You're right. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They do because they're. I think that's also Lucas's point, is that these, these people were lazy and arrogant, and they paid the price. And they're, to be honest, as much as they talk about the Sith being bad people, the arrogance of the Jedi is what fails them to an immense degree. And, you know, I will give credit to Yoda where he goes, we've been blinded the entire time. At least he says that. But once again, he does little to remedy the situation. And that's the part that really upsets me. He's like, oh, no, we are, we are, in, like, he says that the we're Sith, being had. Yeah, and instead of resolving it, he's just like, "Well, the tools of the person manipulating us, I'm just going to use. I'm just going to use yeah. this clone army." Yeah, but he says that like the the dark side will shroud everything in darkness, right? The Sith shrouds things in darkness, and then he says that's what they do, and then he says that's what's happening, and then he never says what should we do to fix this. Yeah, and then the other thing is. Do Doku, and I'm wondering why Darth Sidious had him do this, unless he was doing it to be like a double agent. Doku tells you McGregor, I mean Obi Wan Kenobi, uh, yeah, the uh, Republic is been taken over by the Sith, mm -hmm. and at, at that very same time, Palpatine is taken over the Republic. So it's like, wait a minute, Doku's telling me that the Sith is now in charge of the Republic, and there's only one guy now in charge of the Republic. And some fucking Jedi went 10 years ago and authorized this army, which the one guy, it's Palpatine. Like, how could they not see that it's fucking Palpatine? I get that they can't see. I under, I kind of understand that because it's just fun. They just clearly just can't. But yeah. the thing is, Dooku goes, you know, man, this is what's happening. We can take down the Sith. And it's like, it's, it's like, cool. This guy is trying to manipulate you, to get you onto his side. I'm kind of curious as to what happens. Like, I don't remember Revenge of the Sith, but I just know that um, I'm just like, would Dooku, if, if Obi-Wan Kenobi had said to Dooku, I will do whatever it takes to kill the Sith, let me join you. Would he have taken out, would Dooku have taken out Palpatine? I don't remember the third movie that well. So that's why, you know? I think... He was willing I to think, gamble to I get think, to get Obi Wan Kenobi. And, and first, I'll say this: the cartoon series clears up a lot of this shit, the Attack of mm -hmm. the uh, the Clone Wars. But this is my thing: you shouldn't need to watch a hundred and forty episode cartoon series, no, to fill out plot holes. It's, of this it's insane to yeah. do that. It's just like, hey, we're not going to answer this question in this movie with a couple of lines. Instead, how about you watch seventy hours of cartoons? And it's like, I know. Hey, hey, man, Disney, come and on. And it's now. like, it is, and the cartoon, like, it solved a lot of problems with all, with all three of these movies. But right. if you again, like, if you need seventy hours to fix the problems of your movies. Make better movies. Right, right. It just, man, it just kind of like, there's and certain things that... I think, no, but I think Doku, if Obi-Wan had said, okay, I think they either would have killed him or tried to turn him into a Sith as well. 
yeah, but whatever happened to playing some sort of double agent there yourself too? You know what I mean? Like yeah. you go, you, you, instead you go, he's like, oh, Dooku says, I can free you, right? Mm-hmm. I can get you out of here. And then he goes, listen, man, they've taken over the Senate. We got to take care of this problem. Let's sort this shit out. And then while locked up, literally chained up, it was suspended in gravity. Obi-Wan Kenobi goes, nah, I'm good. Buddy, you're in chains. Say what you need to do to get out of them. Yeah. You know, like nobody, if somebody's holding the key to let you out of the jail cell and they go, hey, listen, I need you to help me move a couch later. What are you going to say? No, (laughs) you say yes. We'll move the couch if you let me out. And then when you're out, play a fucking double agent. Man, this whole movie, people give a lot of shit to Anakin. Truly, Obi-Wan Kenobi might just be mentally retarded. Mike, I think I think you made a good point that he is mentally retarded. Yeah. You know? Um yeah, it's uh here's the deal. I like uh, you know what I like and about I feel like I could say that word because they said it was a long time ago in a galaxy yes. far, far away. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, this is what I like about you know, as now that there's more and more Disney stuff, what I like about the prequels is that he's not trying to hit familiar beats and what i mean by that is he it's it, he goes for alien things he, he he's going to new planets he's going to like like things we never saw before in a star wars film he's mm-hmm. going for like motifs that we never saw like the the, the um the droids the um the cloners and then he is bringing elements slowly from the first three movies but it's such a different alien world. And then you see the new movies and it's like the original three movies over and over again, just remixed, you know? Mm -hmm. And I kind of like the more time passes. I like the fact that he did go for some, he went for his own direction. A lot of this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, when you make the first movie with what little shoestring budget you made Mm -hmm. a guy, essentially in a garbage can pretending to play a, a robot, uh, r2d2 or whatever the hell it is you have another dude in some hairy ass suit when you have the budget and the means to finally make the vision that you wanted you're going to shoot for the moon man i listen everything when you read about like how the original star wars was created you really want nothing but george lucas to win and- um oh, shit i just had a point i wanted to make fuck i wanted to ask you a question what? I'm sorry. I lost my I lost oh, myself. God. I lost myself. Um so overall, how do you how do you rank this movie? In terms of like what like do you, the... do, you, do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? I mean, I think it's good, but I think that when you watch it as an older man, you know, you just start because when this movie came out, it was what 2004? No, two. 2002. 2002. Okay, yeah. right. So that's 19 years ago. Mm-hmm. so i at that point let me just do a little quick math minus 19 i was 18 years old right i was 18 when that movie came out and watching it you know it's weird because i'm closer to anakin's age at that point in my life and i go man this guy is a dick why he's got all these powers why does he just not be a dick why does he not you know what i mean he's so like an asshole and i judge him as a peer and then as a result, I think I'm too harsh at that point. But yeah. looking at this movie 19 years later, uh, 20 years later, I go, man, this guy was steered wrong, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that if that would have all been adjusted, if the people in charge just really took some self-evaluation and said, hey, man, let's give this a minute. Let's see what the hell's happening here. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, and I, yeah. You're you're not wrong, and I think um, yeah, I I I I don't like Anakin, but also like whenever he does act out, they all just look at him weird, and like they don't even try to address the problem, you know? Yeah. I mean, dude, if you're 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 quartering Jar Jar Binks to tell him how much you're in love with a woman, you've you've got you you got to see a psychiatrist. You know? But it's it's like little things that are the outbursts with Obi Wan, the outbursts with Jar Jar, the outbursts with the uh, the um, the Queen of um, the new Queen. 
while yeah. Amid- while Senator Amidala is talking to her. And it's like, dude, these are all bad, glaring signs. By the way, very, very, um, very uh, uh, forward thinking. This it, it, an Indian woman was elected queen of Naboo. That was very nice. That, uh, <laughs> I mean, sure. I mean, I nowadays like- they would have had a part. Like nowadays, uh, fucking. Vulture or an article, we need more with the Indian Queen of Naboo or something. Yeah, the thing is, this is that I think Star Wars was always forward thinking in terms of like, yeah, you know, people they were never like backwards in terms of Jar Jar Binks, I think, was a huge misstep, yeah. but like, I think in general, the movies were pretty solid for what they but were. People complain about diversity in Star Wars, and I'm like, um, the aliens are the diversity, that's what I don't think you see, like in the original Star Wars, like, right, right, he, like, I, I think. In the Star Wars world, no one's like Asian or Black or Russian. You're all like, oh, that's a human, and I'm a Wookiee, and that's mm-hmm. a Yoda. You know what I mean? Right. Like uh, that's the thing. I don't think. I don't think think they get. I don't. Think yeah, because the thing is this: in Star Wars, since it's a different galaxy, right? Whatever. Yeah. The long time all, ago. Also, there's all bunch of planets. Yeah. But but look at it this way: it's. like people look at the movie and they go there needs to be more diversity and it's like yo diversity is no longer an issue here Mm -hmm. they are human beings yeah and there's literally millions of different rate of species of people Mm -hmm. and you're telling me that you're gonna be like like i don't need to hear about mace windu's upbringing if he was raised in the south side of chicago you see what i'm saying like i don't (laughs) give a shit like i don't care I think like, like none of that in, stuff matters. I think to aliens, it's like let's say Jabba the Hutt, right? Yeah, it's like a, it's like <laughs> they see humans as dogs. So, for example, like I, no one goes like I prefer a, a brown dog to a white fur dog. Right. They're just like I want a dog. Oh, that dog yeah. seems nice. And I think <laughs> that's the same thing with humans. It's like all right, um, the Asian guy. Well, the Asian guy is better at math, but the white guy is better at racism. Like, you know, like no, dogs have yeah. traits. What? Right, right. None of that shit matters anymore. But like, yeah, they don't saying? care. It's just like, that's yeah. a human. That's it. Yeah, the humans. Like, no one, like, when people gather cats, they're not like, oh, no, no. Well, yeah, people are like that with, with black cats. Wow, racist. But yeah. it, they're just cats. And I think that's right. when a job of the hut or a fucking Darth Maul looks at humans, that's what they see. They just see humans. Right, right. And I think that that's one of the, and I get like they put, they hired more, they hired different people, but it wasn't forced. And I do have to give credit to Star Wars about that. Like none of it was forced. It's not like they said like, you know, you're not well, some, here. I mean, no, I mean, some of the writers like scream and yell, like somebody was like, how come there's no trans characters in Star Wars? And I'm like, what, and, but, and what the newer, newer ones? Yeah, like some of these like writers, like people that write for these, and it's like, but would, would trans be an issue in that universe? Like, I just feel like if someone said I'm wearing a dress, they'd be like, okay. You know, yeah, like, yeah, like none of that stuff is. I mean, I guess because you know, in this situation, heterosexuality is prominent, and I get it, I understand that, but you don't have time to really justify a person's existence. And I think that with diversity hiring, that's what they really want to yeah, do. Yeah. So I think that because they don't want to, that like none of that shit's a problem anymore because there's greater things at play here, there's no time to justify those things. And if you start to worry about those things, you lose actual focus of the story. Man, when they force a lot of these things on you, it's bad. But when they yeah. do it in a way where they're the cast, and I'm not against, obviously I'm not against diversity casting, yeah. but I'm just saying like, if they have a diverse cast, but they don't, it's not being thrown at your face in every second, then it's a different story. Like for example, with the queen, it's like, it is what it is, you know? And that's the way it should be. It's the same thing. Like I watched a show, Law and Order, Organized Crime, right? The new one. And it's a super diverse cast, but it's never thrown in your face. Yeah. And that's what makes it good because they focus on the storyline to supersede all that other stuff. I think the real question, I think the real question is, why are they electing children to run Naboo? That's the real question. I don't know. Why are children getting getting to run for the head of the... I mean, why are they electing children to watch over one of the most important members of, of the galaxy? Exactly, yeah. That's, that's the question. weird thing about Naboo. It's like, we know the first movie kind of, I just think of a lot of Star Wars just kind of accept it. But when mm. she got into like, I ran for two terms, I was in the child political political program. It's like, but who had this idea of we should have, ch- we should let children run for to the top? Honest, man, 
to well, I'm I kind of am for it, I think. And now that yeah, I'm thinking about it, because think about all the politicians we have now. They're all dumb old. Yeah, it's true. So if anyone's going to be forward thinking. And I think that might have been a choice by George Lucas to be like, you know what? We'll let these younger people run the, mm-hmm. the, the planet. I think that's a good one upon retrospect. I'm, I'm going to go with I think that's a good idea. Well, I mean, anyone older that their views. And I do think we need so to like, I do think like, you know how we have an age limit of when you can start running. I think there needs to be an age limit when you stop running. I think fucking 100%. 75 and out. 75, buddy. I'm 65. You know what? You might be right. I th- yeah, I think I think twenty to sixty-five. Well, the age of retirement, sixty-five in this country. You know what? So, that you know what? That's a great point. Yeah, twenty to sixty-five, and then you're out. I mean, I would probably jump it up to like maybe thirty. Thirty to sixty-five. Yeah, Yo, you know if you, you can't be president in thirty-five years' time to get a four-year chunk out of it, then what are you doing? You yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like the fact that we have these goofy eighty-year-olds, like yeah. Stuff, it's like the fact that like Trump could even run again, and he's like, is he in his eighties? He's about to be in his eighties, right? I mean, he'll be in his late seventies. I mean, uh, everyone. It's like old. why, why, why? Are you, you wouldn't let a guy his late like if New York Comedy Club had an open call for a manager, and a bunch of seventy-eight-year-olds showed up, they would just be like, absolutely not. But like it's we're gonna for, let them run the country, you know what I mean? Buddy, forget, forget comedy, forget yeah. managing. Yeah, some of these people can't drive. I know. <laughs> like you want them to make decisions about the country, they don't know to turn left or right. They don't know yeah. where the blinkers are. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, but let, let me. And then I like the action scenes. I really love one of my favorite action sequences of all these movies is the chase in the Coruscant, the city with the assassin. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I just I just thought like the action scenes in this movie were very very good. The fight with Django is very good. Mm-hmm. He really stepped it up because the first one doesn't. And I like the pod race, but uh, uh, the rest doesn't really hold up. But this one has a lot of like fun action sequences. I didn't remember like I remember watching. I know I watched the movie when I was younger, but there was. But I was thinking about those first three movies, and I thought, what did I? what was like a scene that really stuck in my head? And it was the scene in the sort of like the gladiator arena. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I forgot that it's in this movie. And then I remembered and I was like, oh yeah, this is a great scene. You know? Yeah. It's, it's a really, it's a lot of action. Everyone gets a time to shine. Mm-hmm. Um, you even get to see the Jedi's. You get to see Boba Fett. I mean, they set up a lot of shit. It's, it's a lot. It's a really fun final sequence. And then Yoda. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, all of it. They top it off really well. The last 45 minutes of the movie is really, I mean, they give you, if you're a Star Wars fan, they deliver. And that's really, man, that kind of, that's pretty awesome. So, yeah. So, I mean, I I fluctuate with this movie because some people swear it's worse than Phantom Menace. I think those people are absolutely insane. Um, You think it's, oh, that it's worse than Phantom Menace? Yeah. Yeah, I don't no, think absolutely. so. No, I, I don't. I don't think so either. I think uh, the, the problem is Phantom Menace has so many like the thing. The few things that are really good about Phantom Menace are so good that they get blindsided. Like, well, the things you, that are so good about Phantom Menace are work because the rest of the movie is so fucking. But like, how do you how do you nail these things? Mm-hmm. But then you have all these other terrible decisions. Yeah, I think Darth Maul is fantastic, and then mm-hmm. also the the score is fantastic. The fight. Mm-hmm. And that's that uh, sequence by, I forgot, John, uh, I forgot who did it. Williams. Um, John Williams, right. So that sequence, that fight sequence, and then also Darth Maul, and then the character and the, you know, all that kind of shit. It's amazing. So I think that people get blindsided with that because those are such small but memorable parts that they look at overall um, Attack of the Clones and they go, they go, ah, Attack of the uh, Phantom Menace is better. And you're like, no, 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 no. You watch these movies back to back you're going to really just go, no, there's no way that um, a Phantom Menace is better than Attack of the Clones. They did better in the movie. as, like, And I think it's the case, man. Each movie gets progressively better. Yeah, in the, in the, in the prequel trilogy, yes. I, the, my favorite is Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, absolutely. What yeah. You were supposed to, I mean, it's one of the most quotable, memorable, the beginning of Darth Vader, like the, the tragedy of Darth Vader. And then you've got oh, 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 the tragedy of Anakin where you were supposed to, when Obi-Wan Kenobi is standing there and they're fighting on that planet, he goes, you were supposed to save the force, not leave it shrouded in darkness. Buddy, that's a fucking, that shit bangs still. Yeah. And the way he yelled it, yeah, it was really, yeah. it, it was a good, I like that fight. I like that fight scene. I even like the fight scene between Yoda and uh, Palpatine. I've got the upper hand, and you know this, and he fucking lobs his legs off. Yeah. 
They, they, and they're then not the joking, dude catches catch fire. He just spent 20 years with the guy and he chops his legs off. And his hand. Yeah. Jesus. What yeah. an intense movie. Casey, where, I mean, Casey, Canal. Jesus, Canal, yeah. where can people find you on social media? Um, everything's the same. It's Twitter, Instagram, website. It's the same thing. It's all day K C A. So it's all day and then my initials K C A. Awesome. Guys, um, if you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe. Also, check out the archives. We've covered every Star Wars films up, up until Attack of the Clones. And we covered all Disney films. As I said, Casey Aurora and Cook Canal was mm-hmm. uh, there for fun and fancy free in the original Disney animated films. That's in the archives. The Pixar films are in the archives. A ton of stuff. Check it out. Please, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Ray Goots, and follow the podcast on Instagram, Goots is Disney Pod. Uh, Canal, thank you so much for being part of the show, man. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. It was fun to fun to have this conversation. Yeah, guys, we'll be back next week with Revenge of the Sith. We'll see you then.